Aaron Blaze here. It is Friday, October 8th. We are back with you again, as usual, as every Friday at this time. Hello, everybody. Unless we're out of the country doing stuff. Uh huh. But uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, uh, it's Inktober. We are in the middle of Inktober. I haven't done any ink drawings yet this month, so we thought it might be kind of fun to sit down, go to the traditional desk, which is where I'm at today, and do some ink drawings. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we've got a few things to announce uh, before we get going, as we usually do. First thing is, uh, since we are in Inktober, um, we got a, a, a nice discount for you on my pen and ink course. Um, it's a 30% discount. So if you go over and, and check that out, uh, you can get that for 30% off. And uh, it's a great, great course. It's it's fairly short. I take you through several... Um, several processes of, of some of my ink drawing and some of my methods and techniques and all that. I really enjoyed making it. It's a fairly quick course. Um, and so once again, it's 30% off. Happy Inktober. I hope you enjoy it. And then uh, Ronnie Williford, my good friend Ronnie, uh, who you guys all know out there, uh, amazing artist. Well, it was one year ago today that he put out his fundamentals for drawing. Uh, and so that is up for sale for this weekend only at 50% off. So go on over if you have, uh, especially young ones in the family that are interested in drawing and really don't know how to get started and want to, you know, start kind of a an academic uh, um, approach to it. Ronnie's got a great course that is really uh, young viewer friendly and a lot of fun, and uh, I think you guys would enjoy it. So it's uh, Ronnie Williford. I think what's it? It's not introduction. It's. Uh, <clears throat> So, let's draw a let's solid draw. foundation for artists. A solid foundation for artists. There it is. And so uh, go on over to creatureartteacher.com and check that out. You can get it for 50% off. So that's great. Also, uh, last week I was with you guys and we were talking about our Africa trips and our trip. And uh, and uh, Dustin was showing his photos and, and we were showing a lot of Nick's videos. And I was doing some drawing and I started uh, a drawing of a leopard. I want you guys to see the finish because um, I got basically through the leopard, but didn't finish the uh, all the grasses and stuff. And in this particular painting, I was particularly happy with the grasses. I, um, I really loved how they came out. And uh, and I had some fun with the lighting as well. So I wanted you guys to see that. So here it is. Do you have it up? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So here's the leopard painting. Like I said, it was a lot of fun. And um, it's fair, it's a fair amount different from the, from the reference. And I'm always harping on you guys, you know, use your reference only as a starting point and, uh, you know, let that be there just for your, um, just for reference. And, you know, if you need some anatomy or things like that, but feel free to change your lighting and change compositions and things like that. Cause that's, you know, you, you let the artist, you be the, being the artist drive how that image is going to look. Don't be dictated by your reference, be a pigeonhole in. And then today, um, I was going through a lot of uh, the photos from the trip, Dustin's photos specifically. And there was a day that we were out there. I think it was on the second or third day. This was the very first day. I think it was the first day. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember very well. <laughs> yeah, it was really rainy. And we came up on a mama cheetah and her three uh, almost ready to be kicked out of the house cubs. They were almost her size. They're probably about 15 pounds, 10 pounds lighter than her. And uh, it had been raining, 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 and they were all soaking wet. And um, we've got a lot of great photos of that. But there was one photo in particular of the mother, uh, all kind of scruffy from the rain, uh, drinking out of a puddle from the, from the two-track. And I really like the light value of the puddle. Uh, I love the scruffiness of her fur. I love the pose. I love the reflection in the puddle. Um, all of that. And so I just thought that would be kind of fun to draw today in ink ink and uh, jelly roll which is my white pen and i think we can get some really fun effects out of that so i'm going to dive into that but before we do i uh, just want to let you know we got nick birch here and he's going to be manning questions and he's actually at my digital desk today and we got dustin who's going to be handling stuff on his end over at his uh, desk and then the other thing i want to mention is being october 8th i want to give a big huge happy birthday i love you shout out to Vedanta Sproston, my girlfriend, she is. It's her birthday today. I won't say her age because it's not. It's not polite. <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't care, but I just won't do it. She's younger than me, though. I'll give you that. 
Which isn't saying much. You're old. <laughs> I am old. Everybody thinks Nick is my son. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, Ernest Hatea says, uh, watching live from Masai Mara. Oh, awesome. Wow. And, and I think, uh, if I remember right, Ernest is one of the one of uh, Jorge's uh, crew, I think, if I recall. Evans or Ernest? Ernest. Oh, right. I don't remember. I can't remember everyone's name. I'm sure Ernest uh, is one of the guys. So you're not, you're probably not going to be able to see this as I draw because I'm drawing very lightly in pencil. I can um, barely see it, but it's there. Yeah, I'm just trying to get the initial. I draw very, very loose at this stage. So I want to make sure I'm getting proportions right. This is a very simple pose. One of the things I love about it. But I'll look at things like, you know, I'm looking at this shape where the, the, the front forearm comes down and creates a shape to the, to the nose. And you almost got this um, triangle that's even on two sides. What is that? Is that isosceles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an isosceles triangle. Uh, did you see any black and white rhinos in the Masai Mara Gamers Room? <clears throat> On our last day, driving back to our hotel from the Elephant Orphanage. In Nairobi. In Nairobi, of all places. A, through the fence of Nairobi National Park, we saw two black rhinos. But there we did the, not see any But we didn't see in any the in the Mara. I've seen black rhinos in the Mara twice. I've been to the Mara four times, and of the four times, I've seen black rhinos twice. They're very rare to see. You know, everyone always says, well, you're, you know, you're lucky if you ever see a leopard out there. I've seen more leopards. Yeah, we caught... The leopards. Yeah, we saw two leopards on this last trip. Yeah. Actually, I forgot my... my ring short. Oh, got to pop up here. There we go. <laughs> Uh, were you part of the art direction and animation of the Bear Brothers? You mean Brother Bear? I think so. Probably you mean Brother Bear, and yes, I directed Brother Bear. I co-directed it. My directing partner, Bob Walker, and myself, we, we directed Brother Bear. Now, now, what grade pencil are you using again? Oh, this is just a regular, this is a National Guard pencil. <laughs> it's just a number two pencil. It's just a number two, just to just to throw down some lines. Just one that was randomly sitting around. Yep. <clears throat> My brother-in-law was in the National Guard, so he gave me a whole bunch of pencils. Speaking of the last one sitting around, Martin Berger's asking uh, a question of, will Vedanta eat the last hot chip for her birthday? No. <laughs> I won't allow it. We got people watching from Austria, people watching from Pakistan. <clears throat> People from Kenya. All over the world. Holy cannoli. I love it. So, once again, I'm keeping it very loose. Loosey goosey. Aaron, have you ever tried drawing manga or anime? I have, uh, no. <clears throat> Not seriously. I've, I've, I've done little bits here and there, but no, I haven't. Um... Matter of fact, we were talking about this recently about having a course regarding that. We might do in the future. That'll be interesting. Yeah, see, Dustin perked up all of a sudden. You have my attention. <laughs> I'm working on a course right now on a, a, a new animation course, which I'm really excited about. And uh, I'll be able to share more with you guys in the future it's going to be really cool have you ever drawn dragons i have drawn dragons i've done dragons on the live stream yep i remember you remember you remember you remember, you remember. If you check out our youtube channel you'll find them there <coughs> hello hi uh, is three hours a day enough for a good progress? I can't draw more because of my work. Thank you very much. Sure. Three hours a day is great. 
It just it depends on how you feel. Do you feel like you're making progress? So it's, yeah, it's however you feel. So all I'm doing right now is just very lightly kind of hitting some of these areas. And, and one of the things I do when I'm trying to lay in uh, a, a quick pencil sketch is I'm not only looking at the positive shapes, meaning the shape of the object itself, in this case, a cheetah. I'm looking at negative shapes, the shape that the space between the chin and the, and the front legs are, are making. I look at all those and compare them as well, because that helps with accuracy. How come you don't sharpen your pencils like some artists do where you expose a bunch of lead? Oh, because in this case, I'm not looking for a, a big, um, I'm not looking for a big uh, uh, face of graphite on the pencil. Uh, because I'm doing pen and ink, I want a nice, uh, nice little accurate uh, line drawing. Dustin, what's your thoughts on Squid Games? I have not watched that. I really don't like that movie or that series. Oh, really? It's like the number one thing in the world right yeah, now. Yeah, I just think it's it's so, it's blood, <coughs> porn. It's blood porn. I think it's brutal. Is it, I know that's what it's it a movie? It's what it's about, it's and it's serious. Oh, there's a whole social commentary on it. I just, it's just not my cup of tea. And I watched it. And I just was like, ugh. I was the, I was in the minority in the family here because everyone wanted to watch it, and I was just not into it. What was the weather like during your trip to the Masai Mara? We had uh, each day was nice and uh, sunny in the morning, and then it would cloud up. And we'd get showers in the afternoon, early evening. It'd be nice and cool throughout the evening. And uh, yeah, only like two or three days did it not rain. The rest of them. Yeah, but it, to me, it was like Florida rain. So it wasn't, yeah. it, I liked it. Well, there was that one moment, I think it was like the second to last day uh, where we had, where it rained so much that we ended up going into the, uh, into the brush yeah and just had oh it's like a downburst the downburst almost like a tornado (laughs) what was it like working with jason riaz doing the voice of danahi uh jason was great you know he jason um he was he was uh, he was great you know he was you know worked just as hard as everybody else and and uh i really enjoyed working he was probably the one of the most personable guys you know, really, I mean, everybody was nice, so don't get me wrong, but he, something about Jason, he's just, you know, he's just a down-to-earth guy. It was really sad to hear when he passed. Have you seen the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die? No. Stop. Yeah, it, it came out last night. Oh, last night, yeah. Yeah. Because I was thinking about going to see it last night. How did the idea of making Brother Bear come about, and when did it all begin? It began in 1997. I was finishing up on Mulan, and uh, they were developing a movie called Bears at Disney. It was after Lion King had been a big success, and they realized they had no other animal movies on the books. And uh, and so the movie, but they, they it, had, it had kind of stalled in development. Nobody... It was in development, but no one was really working on it anymore. <clears throat> and um, and so when I found out about it, I just finished up on Mulan. I found out about the movie, and I really wanted to work on it. And so um, I got involved with it and um, kind of threw out everything, because I'd always been a fan of Native American myths and legends, and really we wanted to create our own myth, our own legend, and tell it in kind of the traditional Native way. And, and mixed with Disney, of course. And that's kind of how it came about. And we spent a couple of years just developing the story, researching Native culture, Native cultures and Native myths, and trying to get a flavor for how those stories unfolded and how, you know, the, what were some of the, the lessons that they taught and the morals and, and things like that. And we really got into it. And obviously, we got into it. We're making a movie. But... um. But it was, for me, it was just, it was super, super uh, educational, obviously, because you're getting in there learning all this stuff. And, and uh, 
and you know taking the research trips to alaska and the northwest and uh it was a lot of fun and then you know we purposely set the time the time period to around the, the time of the ice age the last ice age because we wanted to have some kind of a little bit of cultural leeway that we could make up a little bit of our own culture and so we set it way way back so we could do that some people are asking if we have a status update on the art books uh they're still at port we're still waiting for them to clear customs as soon as we have them we're going to start shipping them out so if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash books <clears throat> excuse me uh you can still pre-order and if you pre-order you're guaranteed a signed copy of uh both books so make sure you head on over there and get those while you still can yeah we are so sorry that it's taking so long when we set this up and started this project um we had no idea we we couldn't anticipate the problems that we would that covid would cause in the docks and the production and things like that um but just know that they are done the books are done and they are printed and they are they're in the port so they're so close um and it's so frustrating because they are so close and I, I know I'm annoying Nick at this point because every day I go, Nick, any word? Yeah, no word. Don't you think it, I'd tell you if there like was? The, What's that? It's very much like the, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just in line. If if anybody's been following news, those, I think there's just a massive backlog of shipping containers getting unloaded. And we're just waiting in line like everybody else. And uh, speaking of uh, books, what anatomy books uh, would you recommend? Um, I always thought Bridgman was really good. Um, when I was a kid, I was really into Bern Hogarth, Dynamic Anatomy. I don't know that I would recommend that now because it's very caricatured anatomy, but it was very dynamic and fun for comics and things like that. Who was the girl that did the figure book that you actually... I think you wrote an introduction for it um yeah uh, uh, oh, oh my gosh you put me on the spot sorry uh that's to, okay that's uh, um oh my gosh I'll find who it. did um i'll find it yeah sorry uh did you hear and see many birds in africa yes we did especially a lot of uh, uh blackhead weaver birds that were just outside of our of our uh uh what would you call the a, a living hut, sleeping hut? Yeah, I'd call it our hut, our sleeping I'd hut. Call it, yeah. It definitely was not a tent. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine for like the majority of the trip. I kept on calling it the our tent. But um, yeah, we saw those and lots of uh, griffin uh, vultures. Saw secretary bird, gray herons, all sorts of birds. Saddle bill storks. Yep. Uh, what beers did you have in Africa? Tusker. Tusker. Did you ever meet or work with Jin Kim? Yes. Jin Kim and I know each other well. Well, I shouldn't say well, but yes, we know each other and we work together and we had, uh, I very much love Jin Kim's designs. Ah, oh, he's colorblind. I didn't know that. Jin Kim is? Yeah. According to Wikipedia. Huh. Yeah. He's one of the best uh, character designers I've ever seen. If it's cool to ask, roughly, how much would a trip to Africa, um, such as the one you took, cost? Uh, it depends on the airfare, but the, the, um, the camp that we went to is about $3,700 a week per person. And that includes your airfare from Nairobi to the Mara. But as far as getting there from wherever it is you live, you know, that's a big variable because you can you can fly coach and save a lot of money or you can fly business class and pay extra money. Oh, um, someone commented Samantha Youssef. That's who. You Samantha did. Youssef, thank you. I couldn't get the Youssef out. I feel embarrassed.
it all uh it all depends on your location and uh what class you wanna you wanna fly. Yeah. To be totally honest and you know above board, we really save up a lot so that we can fly business class and it's if you can do it, I know it's expensive, but if there's only one or two of you, we save up so we can go business class. Um, because it's, especially for us here in the United States, for Europeans, it might be a little easier, but for us, it's about, a, it's about 24 hours of travel time. And yeah, from and, New York to Nairobi, it's a 13 hour fly and then back it's 15. Yeah. But that's just from New York to Nairobi. We still yeah. got to get to New York from Florida. Right. So total travel time is about 24 hours, usually there and about. And, you know, your big flight, the one we did from New York to Nairobi was 14 hours, 13 hours. And um, and so you want to be able to sleep. And, um, and so we like to, you know, put our seats down flat and, uh, and sleep that way. That way, when you get there, you're rested and you're ready to go. We basically slept through our jet lag. I mean, we had a little bit of jet lag when we got there, but it wasn't too bad. Hey, guys, just popped on. Uh, are you using one of your recent Africa trip photos of one of Dustin's as reference for this drawing? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I just wanted to drive Dustin nuts by saying You can show the reference on your camera. <laughs> I've got it taped up right now. Oh, you do? Yep. Yeah, show oh, the, did you uh, pull it up? No, it's fine. You can show it on the desktop again. There we go. There it is. Oh, here's the other thing. Maybe we can do this next week. I was talking to Manny, mm -hmm. and we were talking about maybe doing a uh, interview draw thing like we do uh, using... Um, what's nah. That? What's that? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but using um, uh, Joey... Or Joey. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Who's Joey? <laughs> I my brains are just falling apart today. <laughs> Johnny, who's Johnny? <laughs> but the uh, drawing software and doing a, an Africa thing with him. <clears throat> Maybe get Peter in there too. I'd like to see if we can do Magma. that. Magma. Magma. Thank you. Magma. Liquid hot magma. Hot magma. Of molten. I always say, I always think it's liquid hot magma. Molten. Molten hot magma. <laughs> so because it's all scruffy and the drawing's fairly small, I've got to be really choosy about what lines I put down. <clears throat> Any advice for drawing cheetah spots? Is there a certain shape you're aiming for? Yeah, well, cheetah <laughs> spots are tend to be round, obviously, um, but you want to see the fur in them. They're not just a spot. And if you really study the spots, they're mainly big spots, but interspersed, there's small spots in between the big spots. So you want to make sure you catch that. And here I'm using a, um, a Bimoji brush pen. Emoji. And uh, because I'm trying to be super delicate with it, and it's a brush pen, that line weight is really variable. So I have to get, be really careful about how I draw in here. Uh, how much time would you say it took you to get uh, good enough to start animating professionally? A couple of years. I would say a couple of years, yeah. That's about how long it did take me. Would you, Aaron, like to visit Rwanda in the Virunga volcanoes? Yes, matter of fact, that's what we were, we, while we were in Kenya talking about our next trip, there's a group of us that are talking about trying to get to the mountain gorillas uh, in the next couple of years. I was just reading about the um, 
the 14 year old gorilla i can't remember her name uh it starts with an n in bulky in Bul in, i can't remember but she just passed away from illness but she was one that was really famous in the uh a couple of years ago where her and her her uh keeper and another gorilla are standing there like people up against the fence <laughs> and um it was a really well-known photo that really bopped around the internet quite a bit for a few days and um you could just see the humanity in them the, and the intelligence and you know it's how sentient they are and that from those photos it's one of the <coughs> that made it so famous and then the photo of her lying in her the photo that went around I mean, it just brought tears to my eyes that you could see her life slipping away and the love that she had for her keeper and, and the love that he had he's devastated and they're just laying there holding each other as she's dying and i don't know if you guys saw that this week but it was pretty pretty emotional any tips for film students who don't have any experience with animation but would like to be able to do so in the future yeah learn to draw because you got you know you have to understand drawing you got to understand all that kind of stuff I mean, I guess it depends on what you want to do on a film. You can also yeah. be, a, be an editor and be, but I don't know. But if that's something you're interested in, yeah, editing, you know, animation editing is completely different than live action editing. Any plans for an ape or chimpanzee course? Yes. I get that question a lot. And I, I always intend to, to kind of make that the next thing, and then we get sidetracked onto something else. I was actually really surprised. We did a poll, and I was surprised how much more votes reptiles got. It wasn't even close. I know. That, that surprised me, too. More people wanted a reptile course than an ape course. Hey, Dent Left is here. Hey, Dent Left. Says, hey guys, enjoyed your trip stories uh, from Kenya so much. Uh, we'll head to Africa for wildlife sketching and photography myself in December. Can't wait. You're going to love it. It'll change your life, man. Agreed. It will change your life. Dustin cried like a baby. I didn't cry like a baby. I did shed a tear. <laughs> <laughs> you shed tears. I shed a tear. No, we had to change him. <laughs> <laughs> What am, I, what am I now, a baby? <laughs> so that was the joke you kind of like a baby. <laughs> he was a Wham. mess. So Vedanta is funny. So it's her birthday today. And she has the choice of, you know, for we, traditionally we go out, you know, when it's our birthdays, we go out for dinner and, and uh, we all have our favorite restaurants. And the last couple of years, there's this really, really nice restaurant we've been going to in Orlando, downtown. Um, but we just recently discovered this really great ramen restaurant. And that's it. She wants ramen for her birthday. So that's what we're doing tonight. Are there any places you would love to go to? Um sometime for drawing but have not gotten a chance to yet oh there's yeah i want to go to you know south pacific i haven't really done anything in the south pacific so i want to i want to go to australia and new zealand and um you know and some of the other uh, uh um tasmania uh but also i want to get over to like vanuatu you know dustin your mother and i for years planned a trip to vanuatu which is a big that? it's a big volcanic chain of islands down way down the southern hemisphere south of hawaii Wait, what is that? i only know about it because there was a season of survivor set there oh really yeah oh i think um how was it uh it's really it cool. by light documentary i think the first episode the the photographer of that episode went to that to those islands yeah your mother and i your mother had all kinds of information as we were going to go Unfortunately, we never, we never got to. But if it's the place I'm thinking of from that, from that episode, it looks beautiful there. Oh, it's insanely beautiful.
Yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely insanely beautiful. And uh, to the newcomers that just hopped in, uh, what kind of uh, uh, pen is that again? This is a Bimoji. B I M O J I. Bimoji. And I, I order them online. This is, um, I can't read this, the, uh, the kanji on here. Um, but I, I usually order about 40 of them at a time. And, uh, and I just blow through them. But uh, they, um, it's, it's got a synthetic brush. And they dry waterproof. So you can do watercolor over the top of them. I love them because the the flow, the ink flow is really great. If you take care of that brush and don't damage it, um, it's really, really nice. And you can get super, super fine detail. Or be kind of bold with it, too. What African souvenir did you bring back for Vivacious V? Oh, uh, I was... I went kind of cheap. <laughs> I brought back Maasai blankets for everybody. Which is cool. <laughs> you get a blanket. You get a blanket. Yeah, I didn't bring back any jewelry this time. Well, you got the headdress. Yeah, that's more of a wall decoration. And that was for himself. Huh? That was for himself. That was oh, for yeah, me. That's, that's for me. Come on. Let's be real. Right. Let's be honest. He's kind of the center of attention. Actually, Dustin, go grab it <laughs> for me. It's on, it's on top of the my flat file over to the left. Yeah. Oh, 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 the, uh, yeah. yeah. So we went into some roadside shops, and I got this piece, this little map, to go with my collection of all my other stuff from all over the world. I love this thing. And then this is a, um, I think it's a neck. Hold on. I gotta take my glasses. I forgot to take my glasses. I thought it was supposed to be like a headdress. No, it goes here, and then you wear all kinds of other jewelry around it. But this is all made out of elephant tail hair, so all this stiff, wiry stuff that you see here is actually elephant hair. It's from the tail. It's really cool. I don't know if you can. It's, it's, oh, it's not out of focus, is it? Yeah. But all of this stuff right here is elephant hair along with the beads so i always like to pick up a little bit of art while we're there stuff we can hang <laughs> up. and then i got a nice sharp maasai sword yes and from that same and from the same shop i also got a uh um, a photo album book very neatly decorated and it's right now on the front, Memories of Africa. Did you get anything, Nick? Uh, Nick just left the room. Oh. Nick's a little under the weather today. Under the weather, my friend. Is the uh, thirty seven hundred for the stay at the Maasai camp all inclusive as far as far as food and shelter goes, or is there other fees? No, nope, that's it. That's all inclusive. The only other thing you'd want to think about is tipping tipping at the end. Tipping everybody that works the camp. Oh, that was a group rate. I don't know what the normal individual rate is. That but I mean, most of the time he gets groups in there. I'm not sure. Uh, you'd have to. It, it's the it's the uh, cheetah cheetah tented camp. And uh, that was a group rate, so it could be a different rate. Tim Hodge says, "I've got some paper made from elephant dung." Seriously, I do. I do. Have you ever used that? I have, I, and I I have some as well. 
I came back from Nairobi with uh, my, on my first trip back in 1998. I found an art store inside the city and um, I found all this different paper made from different animal dung. It was really cool. Question, any new bones in your collection? No new bones other than um, the last, you know, we did a portrait uh, course with Kent Spruduso and that gave me the excuse to order a human skull. Now, there, there, there was one particular piece of skull that we saw on the fields of uh, the morrow that you were like oh, really tempted yeah. to grab. I wanted that. I think hippo. it was like a. It was a hippo. Yeah, I think it was the bottom jaw of a hippo. Yeah, we had this. We stopped at this one area for lunch, and uh, this hippo jaw was just sitting there. And you know, it's like, oh man. Well, we were going back and forth because it was <laughs> the same. It was the same brush where the uh, uh, where the leopard was. Yeah, and so we were so we were constantly passing by this this lower jaw of a hippo, and every time we drove past it, Dad would just go, "Oh, I want that." <laughs> Boy, it's really dark. It's dark out today. Clouds have kicked in. Yeah, let's see if uh, we're going to get some storms today. Yeah, let me take a peek at that. Oh yeah, we got some big storms coming in. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. We're the blue dot, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's not there's not much around us. Not too bad. Yeah. One of the things um I like to do as much as anything else is the environment or or at least some of the immediate environment when I'm doing these ink drawings. And so drawing the grass, drawing water, all of that. Um and doing it you know, with the with the same attention to detail as I do with the cats, um, really helps with the end result. So think about the layout. Think about the scenery, where you're you know where you're putting your 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 subject matter, and treat it just as with as much respect as as you are with your main subject. How do you make the spots not look like they're just painted on? Yeah, I try to, well, first of all, I'm trying to add fur texture. And then as I add the fur texture, I make sure the spots um, have the same texture and are flowing in the same direction. And when you do that, it just feels like it's part of it. Now, this one's also going to require, I don't know if you have to zoom in on this or what. Does this, is this... Does it need to be tighter? Does it look okay on screen? Uh, it could be. Well, I mean, it's filling, filling the top to bottom. Okay. Okay. I guess we could, let's go a little tighter just so they could see. Dustin, can you go a little tighter on this? Sorry. I just want them to be able to see the the ink the inking a little better. I know my hand is going to be in the way most of the time, but I'll uh, me pop out of the way. Sorry, folks. I want you to be able to see it a little better. <laughs> I also think it might bring up the exposure a little bit. It's getting a little dark. Yeah. Actually, this is as tight as it go. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, doggone it. That's no bueno. Yeah, this camera looks probably the best for the overhead. Okay, well then, we're stuck with it. Sorry, folks. I did bring up the exposure a little bit. We should probably switch to the Sony's for the overhead. Yeah. Or a different lens. Well, the Sony shoots 4K as well, and it's not like we're... Yeah, that's good. And it has autofocus. There you go. I 
there. Sandy on YouTube says, I like Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. For those who might be joining us late, uh, we're running a 30% off sale on Aaron's pen and ink courses over at Creature Art Teacher. Uh, basically, if you like what you're seeing today, you're going to see a whole lot more of it in our course uh, that's available on our website. It's just 10 bucks for two lessons um, at CreatureArtTeacher.com, and he takes you through materials, paper, all the pens, the stuff that he's using. Uh, so check it out. And then the demo. Yep. I don't know uh, if any of you are Western fans, Western movie fans as much as I am. I love a good Western. Sci-fi and Westerns are my favorite. Um, uh, there's a new movie that's come out on Apple TV. Uh, it's out today called Old Henry. Oh, that came out today? Yeah. It's Blake T. Nelson plays the lead role, which is really interesting to me because he's not a leading man. He just doesn't have the leading man looks, traditional leading man looks. Uh, for those of you that might know, oh brother, we're out there, out there, out there, out there, out there. Out there. Man, oh brother, there. out there. Um, he plays Delmar. He's and, in uh, the jailhouse now. Yeah, he also was in the Buster Scruggs and all that stuff. He's an amazing actor, one of my favorites, and uh, and this movie has incredible reviews. And it's a really good traditional western. So anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there because. I plan on watching it this weekend. Old Henry. Old I, Henry. I just like the title. I just think it's a cool title, too. Old Henry. Did you like the Han Solo movie? Too yeah. dark. Like, visually too dark. Yeah. Yeah. I, to me, I, that guy's just not Harrison Ford. It's a problem. It's doing a prequel to that was doomed yeah. to be... You know, like trying to find someone to be on is near impossible. I actually didn't think he was bad as far as that goes. For me, it was just I just thought the movies were forgettable. Hey. To me, I just kind of had a hard time keeping track of what was going on because, like I said, it was it was so dark you could barely see anything that was going on. Uh, why did Don Bluth in 1979 leave Disney with his crew to uh, compete with Disney to revive animation in his renaissance? I can't remember what the reasons were. Money. I think it was. It was. That, I mean, that's the yeah, gist I think of he, it. I think you might be right. Not, not knocking him. I think at the time, the problem was, was that the studio was in a bad situation and they were trying to cut everybody's pay i think yeah there was well they were in a really bad so well it got to the point in 84 that they were going to shut animation down completely when eisner came in and took over when it was uh it was roy disney that saved it and yeah, erica says rogue one was better agreed definitely agreed oh rogue one's awesome Rogue yeah. One, I think, is probably the best Star Wars movie, period. I, exactly. I, I agree. As far as Westerns go, uh, Shelly says, my favorite, Tombstone. I'll be your Huckleberry. Yeah, everyone That's, loves Tombstone. I love Tombstone. That is my favorite. I love well. uh, Unforgiven and then uh, Open Range. Those are my favorite. My modern favorite, and then obviously, you know, Dances of Wolves and all that. The good, yeah. the bad, and the ugly. Dances, Dances of Wolves is one of my favorite all time films. Wyatt Earp wasn't bad. No, it wasn't. The the one classic Western I really need to see because I haven't seen it since I was way younger was uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. I think we had that on DVD. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. And uh, True Grit, I always like True Grit. Yeah, People always think I'm crazy. Good job right? with, the, um, with the remake with uh, uh, Jeff Bridges. Coen Brothers. What about it? For True Grit. Yeah. What do you think of the... I loved it. It's funny because I'm in the minority, I think, though, because um, I actually like the John Wayne version a little better. I think maybe that's because I grew up on it. Mm -hmm. But um, but I, you know, 
I'm as big a Jeff Bridges fan as anybody, and I thought he was really good in it. But there's something about John Wayne that was a little harder, I think. Do you know anything about the Caps coloring system that Disney used in the 90s? Yeah, I mean, we that's what we started. You know, they wanted their, their, their coloring system to be pr- 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 proprietary, and that's why they developed their own. Um, it was really buggy. And it wasn't just a coloring system. It was it was the whole camera system. Because we would shoot, scan, everything in caps. You know what else is really buggy? An off-road buggy. Yeah. That's like, uh, what's brown and sticky? Ah, which James Bond actor and movie are you <laughs> are your favorite from Doctor No to Did No? Did you hear my joke? No, I didn't. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm sorry. I said your your dumb buggy joke was like this other dumb joke. What's brown and sticky? Crap. A stick. <laughs> what's your favorite James Bond movie? Is the question. James Bond actor and movie, yeah. Um, I grew up with Roger Moore. I wouldn't say Roger Moore was my favorite, but he was the first James Bond I knew um, before I realized Sean Connery played the part. I got. I mean, I I think Sean Connery's the the best James Bond. Yeah, growing up, I think uh, because I grew up on Pierce Brosnan, he he was always my favorite, as well as uh, hit the first movie that he played James Bond, Goldeneye. It's probably my favorite. Yeah, Goldeneye is a good movie, but the rest of Pierce Brosnan's movies were terrible. They, I wouldn't say they were all terrible. They start going down. They're terrible. The, the, the very last one was the worst. Yeah, they get progressively yeah. worse. Are you talking about the Bond versions? The, the Bond movie? Pierce Brosnan uh, Bond. Yeah, Goldeneye is good, and then they get steadily worse. I, can't, I, don't, I don't even. I can't even think of any of the other ones. Uh, exactly. Uh, there's also tomorrow. There's also tomorrow never dies. The world is not the enough. World not, world's not enough. And then die another day. He did four. I think of them. Just, yeah, I think it was just the four. Yeah, they got die four. another day was also good. Not as good as Goldeneye, but right up there. Then uh, the world's not enough is meh. It what about to die enough for diamonds on another day? Huh? What? <laughs> I thought Pierce Brosnan looked like the perfect James Bond, and he had the right attitude, but the movies were no good. Yeah, bad writers. <laughs> Timothy Dalton wasn't a bad one either. Back in the again, I think he had 80s. the look and the attitude, but the movie wasn't that good. He only yeah. did one, right? License to Kill. Yeah, he only did the one. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. I was in. I was in college. We, we had to. One of our assignments was to do a, a movie poster for that movie, for illustration. Were there it, any, it was a fun assignment. Were there any other actors that did only only one Bond film? Or was he the only one that did just one? Well, there was a, wasn't there a Bond before Sean Connery? No, there played? was a Bond after Sean Connery for one. B- between Roger Moore, there was a Bond where Sean Connery left. Oh, right, right, right. And then he came back. So there was another guy. Oh, and his, no, there, his, no, there, his Majesty's Secret Service. Yeah, yeah. Yep. that's right. Yeah, the very first one, there was supposed to be another Bond besides Sean Connery, but I think some there, there was something that happened behind the scenes that ended up uh, forcing that particular Bond to leave, and that's when they decided to try Sean Connery, and became a major hit. In fact, didn't Sean Connery do like? The most James Bond films? No, I think Roger Moore did the most. Oh, really? Remember that classic Moonraker? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that one in years. <laughs> That's all the stuff I grew up with. <laughs> Jaws, the guy with mm-hmm. the with the metal teeth. Any chance to have Peter Hahn do a course on your website? Yes. That'll we are in. <laughs> We're in the early planning stages of something on that. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it all lines up. Uh, did you ever use a dye transfer for anything? I was uh, a retoucher in the 80s with that stuff. It was a lot of fun. 
No, I never have. Die transfer. <laughs> I don't know. Did you ever see if looks could kill with Richard Grieco? No, Richard Grieco. Yeah, oh it was. That's, that's a name I haven't heard since the late eighties. Yeah, it was like uh, he played a high school student that got mistaken for a spy. And it's so ridiculous. It's the movie so over the top. It's hilarious. Well, it's, Richard Grieco is always over the top. Yeah, it's a campy. I like it, but it's it's one of those ones you're like, what? What? It's just absurd. Wasn't he the head guy in Twenty One Jump Street? He was the main character. Uh, he was the guy that they kind of brought in to replace Johnny Depp. He came in later. Oh, okay. Because Johnny Depp was kind of becoming a big star and wanting more money, and so they brought Richard Grieco in, and then... I thought he was part of that to begin with. I don't believe so. Pretty sure he was brought in later. Uh, what Hanna-Barbera cartoons did you grow up on? Uh, Is that how you pronounce Barbera? Yeah. Or... Uh, Scooby-Doo. I didn't really watch a lot of them, though. I, I was Huckleberry in Hound. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely didn't watch those. That was later. Caveman guy. What was the caveman guy? Captain Caveman. Captain Caveman, yeah. Now, I really, I watched, I loved, like, the animated um, Justice League mm. and the Hulk and Spider-Man and all that. I loved the animated versions of them. And then all the Warner Brothers cartoons. They, they, they played every... All the Looney Tunes. Did Hanna-Barbera do Super Friends? Uh, yes, I think so. <coughs> And then there was a couple of live action shows that I watched. I watched uh, Shazam and Isis. It's the Shazam and Isis hour. Exit stage right. Stage left even. That was in 1976 yeah, or 75. 1975. And I, I even remember the cereal I used to eat, and they don't make it anymore. And we were talking about it the other night. It was called Freakies. It was a, it was a sugar cereal. <laughs> But it was called Freakies, and it was Little Monsters. Huh. And there's a whole little story about how the little monsters came to be, and they they grow their cereal in their orchard, and it's pretty funny. Do you need to be able to draw realistic to be a good animator, or is that not necessary? It's not necessary at all. No, not at all. Matter of fact, I would say that there's a lot of animators, successful animators out there, that um, don't draw realistically. I know uh, I know of a lot of 3D animators that don't draw at all. Really? Yeah. Have you seen the movie Bridge of Spies with Tom Hanks? No. Who's Tom Hanks? <laughs> I actually didn't see Bridge of Spies. I heard it was really good. It's a Spielberg movie. It's one of the few of his I haven't seen. Which one? Came, Bridge of Spies. Came out a couple years ago. Yeah. I just never saw it. I think it came oh. out over the holidays. It was like a weird time for it to come out. There was a bunch of other stuff out, and it just kind of fell through the cracks. I think most uh, recent Tom Hanks I've seen is the... Uh... Uh, Greyhound, where he's the uh, commander of a destroyer. Well, that's his most recent movie. So. But yeah, but man, I did not like that movie. I really enjoyed it. I know you did. I didn't see it. I want to see Finch though. That looks cool. Finch, Finch. It's his new one coming out. Gotcha. Will there be a Halloween themed stream this year? Yes. I'm actually thinking of, of uh, dressing up this year. Why not? <laughs> Dustin, do Huckleberry Hound. I, I don't know Huckleberry Hound. Sorry. <laughs> well, you're going to have to learn it. You'd know him if you saw him. Come on, you remember. You remember, you remember. <laughs> you ever hear George Lopez do that, Nick? The stand up? Yep. Come on, you remember. Oh, oh that there's... Huckleberry Hound. I 
Honestly, I've never watched that series. And there's Droopy Dog, too. Is Droopy Dog the one that was in the Who Framed Roger Rabbit in the elevator? Doing it here. Yep. <laughs> Have a good day here. <laughs> Very good. Now, my favorite of the um, dog voices that I can do is from the uh, the Aristocats. Is the... Uh, the, the two guard dogs at the windmill and there's the the tall bloodhound oh yeah like, wait a minute i'm the leader i get to say who when we go okay here we go <laughs> twitch question when you're not doing a live demo and talking is this the normal speed at which you draw yes it's very relaxed it's my it's it's equivalent of needlepoint <laughs> I guess. Now he's actually at his uh at his slowest speed right now. Like when he's off screen, he he uh just draws in a split second. <laughs> right. I'm just gonna draw grasses hey nick we get it you're sick i understand you can <laughs> chill out now yeah yeah <clears throat> oh i'm gonna shut the stream off sorry <laughs> whoops um of all the characters of these shows from like simpsons family guy american dad like all like all the from all the recent animated series uh which character would you say is your favorite I, I, love, I love Family Guy. I love that show. <laughs> Depends by what you mean by recent, right? Like it's yeah, hard Family to... Guy's been around for twenty years, hasn't it? The Simpsons has been around for, for 30, 33 yeah. years. Has it really been that long? Oh yeah. yeah. It came Good. out when I was little. Can't believe they're still going. Simpsons started when Nick was eight, when you were eight years old. I yep. Really? I was I was the prime age for it. I was when people were like protesting. Oh my God, Bart Simpson is corrupting America's youth. Oh my God, it was so funny. Yeah. And that's when I told them to eat my shorts. <laughs> so, so you said thir 33 years? Yep. Yeah, eight, so, 19, well, I was on Tracy Ullman in 1988. Yep. So I it's think been it got, they got their longer own, than I've been born. Oh, yeah. They got their own wow. show. In was 80, that same year? 89 was 89. a Christmas special. Yeah. Yeah. God, that's that's weird to think about. My lord! It's a, yeah, it's the longest running show on television ever in history, right? Animated for sure. Uh, can't well, remember. What about six? Oh, sixty minutes has been around forever. Gunsmoke ran a really long time. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, Laura Cohen says, my kids love the Aristocats, and they came running when they heard that. <laughs> they said you were very accurate. Thank you. I, that's one of my favorites, too. Have you guys seen Hilda? It's an animated Netflix series. It's absolutely gorgeous animation and art style. Hilda? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it either. I haven't, I've never heard of it. It's on Netflix? Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Hilda. A lot of people are saying they love Futurama. Mm. Bend. Yeah, and Futurama had the same sensibilities. I just as uh as the Simpsons, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, same. Yeah, true I, creator. Yeah, I just I didn't get into it as much. Family Guys, I just love Family Guys. Yeah, one of the animated series I've I've been having a lot of fun with is uh, Archer. Oh yeah, I just love that kind of humor. Someone says, "I grew up with your work, and now I'm watching you work. Life is good." <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, Kirk Michael's asking uh, to the both of you: Will there be a course based on layout and backgrounds in the future? Yes. That sort of course takes a lot of prep work, so we're in the early stages on something like that too.
Uh, when you're drawing ground or outside plants and weeds, etc., do you have any tips about that? Yes. My biggest tip on that is pay just as much, if not more, attention to the negative spaces, the dark spaces in between the leaves and the stems, and draw those. Here's a cool Twitch comment. I'm an Aaron Blaze student through your website, by the way. And now my kids are getting a passion for drawing, so they sometimes watch the tutorials along with me. Oh, I love it. Got multiple generations of students now, Aaron. Awesome. <clears throat> but as far as drawing grasses and ground and all that, just you know, really pay attention to the negative space. That's what I'm drawing now. Uh, very few of the of the lines that I'm putting down are the the actual stock of grass. Like right now, I'm doing that. But then I go in and I'm painting negative space in between. Uh, how dangerous are the big animals in Africa, like the rhinos, buffaloes, hippos, and elephants? They're extremely dangerous, but, I mean, you, that's why you respect them and you stay in your vehicle and you don't get out and you don't harass them. Otherwise, you'll die. Yeah, if, you, if you're in your vehicle, you're fine. So don't be afraid to go out of fear of the animals. There's... Yeah. But... You're certainly not getting out of the trucks. Yeah, yeah. Like when, when we were in the uh, in, we were in the Serengeti area, of the Maasai Mara, right? No, no, we were in the Maasai Mara. The Serengeti is so, totally separate. Area. Totally separate. The Serengeti is the Maasai Mara turns into the Serengeti once it crosses into Tanzania. Gotcha. But uh, either way, well, the area of the Maasai Mara that we were we were in was very. All the animals there were very. Rel very relaxed, very calm, but um, I remember hearing stories from some of the folks that further south. Yeah, that, that was for me in Terengeri, Yeah, where in Terengeri National Park in, in, in Tanzania, a lot of the animals have been poached and have bad experiences. The elephants you can't get near, they'll attack you. Whereas the elephants in, in Nairobi or in, uh, in the, in the uh, Maasai Mara uh, are really used to people. Very docile. Yeah, so it's all about location, location, location. Location, location, location. Location, location, location. Yes. That's how the cookie crumbles. I'm going to go ahead and add some shadows. Some shadows? Yes. Boom, 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 boom. So once again, going back to this pen, this brush pen I've been using, look, I'm, I'm using this marker right over the top of the pen. Not a single bit of bleeding. I love how, how uh, really waterproof it becomes. Erica says, love how you draw grass, Aaron. Thanks. And uh, from Tim Hodge, did you ever see the John Wayne movie, uh, Atari? Uh, he leads a team of animal trappers in Africa, and a, a rhino charges their land cruiser. I have never seen that. And uh, uh, from Kevin uh, Claverin, why did you place the cheetah higher on the paper? Because I want to I want to draw the grass down low and push him back into the distance. So the whole plan is to draw more grass down lower. I'm just taking a break break from the grass to add some shadows with my Copic pen. Are Are you okay, Nate? Mm hmm. You want me to clear, uh, nope. clear some space over here? Nope. Are you on the floor? Oh. Yeah. He's on the floor using your chair as an extra table. I thought he was throwing up. <laughs> no, I just had to plug in and my cord wouldn't reach. So. Oh, gotcha. Uh, where do you get the Bemoji pens? I get them online. Just go online. Uh, Nick might be able to find a link. Yeah, I'm working on it right now. Um, it's just that you gotta. It's, it's you don't want to get the felt tip. Uh, you don't want to get the felt tip 
of tips, you want to get the synthetic brush tips. I think it's a medium synthetic Extra brush. Extra fine medium. Yes, synthetic brush. Yep. Ever been to Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming in general in your research for Brother Bear? Oh, yes. Many times. I've actually and, lost count of how many times I've been to Yellowstone. In fact, I, uh, uh, we went early. Here it comes. Year. Here we go. And it happened to Yellowstone? Put it back there. <laughs> so go over to preacherarteacher.com preach and get my new Yellowstone photo reference pack. <laughs> <laughs> You like how I did that little segue there? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Freaking genius. Yeah. Uh, what color pigments would you mix to uh, get a nice sand color? A nice sand color? Yeah, like a light tan. I, I guess you could say so. Like a sand. That's well, ochre and white, and maybe a little bit of uh, some kind of cool blue gray. To uh, you know, really tone it down. <clears throat> See, when I get the uh, the white in here, it's really going to get it to poop. Poop. I'm going to go back to my brush pen. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to go to my white pen. These are Jelly Roll pens. Jelly Roll brand, Secura. And this is a zero, it's a 0 0.8. I find that the, uh, the O5s clog up too much. Uh, any advice when you're drawing from a photo reference on how to choose the best place on paper? Well, you got to plan it out. So you do your thumbnails. Just do thumbnails. I do a thumbnail for everything that I do. So it's, you know, doing little sketches that are going to be the same proportion as what it is that you're drawing. Uh, I desperately need to get into figure drawing and improve my knowledge of the human figure, but I can't find any figure drawing sessions. Uh, do you have any any advice on ways I can really study and learn the human figure and gesture? Well, there are websites out there specifically for learning the human figure. We also Pro have Proco is a great. Yeah, Proco.com is a great resource. And also on Creature Art Teacher, we have a human anatomy course. What was the site that we used for Tony's uh, sculpture? Uh, I'll tell you one second. Uh, while we wait on that, that answer, uh, is that a water marker or alcohol-based? The marker is alcohol-based. Uh, do you find your jelly roll pen to soak up the black ink or the marker? I have a white uh, gel pen, but it tends to soak up the pigment below it even when I wait for it to dry. Yes, I don't I don't use it over other pigment. I only use it over paper. So try to plan it accordingly. If you're putting white marker down or white jelly roll, you shouldn't be putting any pigment pigment down because you want that area to be white. So you shouldn't, why would you put the, the 
the white there or the pigment there to begin with. So try to try to be a little bit more uh, disciplined and plan a little uh, tighter. Hurt models three sixty. Oh, the uh, for Tony's course. Yeah, Tony's course. So these are these are nude models that we that online that you can get for uh, figure drawing. Artmodels360.com. Yeah, Artmodels360. Oh, God. Put my arms in the, in the fur fur. <laughs> hey, Aaron, what's your opinion <laughs> on the movie Balto? And do you know anybody that worked oh, on it? I know a lot of classic. people that worked on Balto. I love Balto. Classic, classic, classic. I've actually never seen it. No? Hans Bacher, who is uh, an one of the greatest designers alive. He's also the villain from Die Hard. <laughs> That's Gruba. Ah. But uh, Hans Bacher, um, he's actually, he designed the Lion King stage show uh, logo. Um, but he did a lot of design work for Mulan. And he did a ton of design work for us, for Brother Bear. Um, but he uh, he was, uh, I think he was the, the uh, I don't know if he was the art director or if he was the, uh, Art, uh, uh, designer anyway for uh, for Balto. <laughs> Could you have it was really hard to get out and get all that out? Could you have also used charcoal for the tone instead of marker? Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, no, it's it's hard to say on this paper because uh, this paper is a little bit uh, smoother, and I don't know how well it would take the. Uh, the charcoal. Kirk Michael says, Aaron, just like to say, I'm really looking forward to your next animation course. What's it about? Go on, spill the beans, brother. Not going to spill the beans. Not going to spill the beans yet. No, not yet. I have a tendency of folks kind of running with it. So I'm not going to spill the beans. And uh, for Martin, do you still have boxes from your storage that you haven't opened yet? Oh, yeah. Oh boy. I think I always will. I'm a lot of questions. How's the screen? Am I in the screen at all? Uh, yes, you are still in the screen. No, I'm saying I'm not. I'm not blocking anything. Oh no 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 no! no. You're good. I'm gonna keep putting my arm. All my pens and pencils keep sticking to my arm. <laughs> You could do another live stream opening some of the some of the extra boxes. Yeah. The thing is that we don't know what's in those boxes. They're mainly just sheets and junk. <laughs> sheets and junk and old bones from people you murdered. Wait, what? What? Uh, when you make your courses, do you relearn some old things? Always. Matter of fact, when I make my courses, a lot of times, uh, it's like the when I'm doing my uh, animal drawing courses, because I'm going so in depth, I'm learning something new every time. That's why I feel like the image has gotten a little dark. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just getting of... dark in general, right? Yeah, I think we it's should the, it's bump the Excel up a little bit. Is it just yeah, just the aperture? Well, actually, you could probably plug in the. I think there's that light over there. Right, so, yeah, turn on another light or something because it's. It, I'm. I think it's dark. It looks like you're sitting in a cave all of a sudden. Stand by, everybody. Stand by, folks. Stand by. That, it's going to be too much of a shadow, Dustin. Yeah. Don't tell me to hang on. I'm, I'm... Put it over here. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Everyone's going to get a, a true taste of how what it's like to work for me. 
That looks a lot better. There you go. You do definitely get a, it. Definitely gets a harsh shadow though. <laughs> yeah. Some, I'm left-handed, dude. Come on. Yeah, it's lit. I mean, we're still getting a shadow, but it's a lot better. From, from, from that one, that's a lot. I'm, I'm watching the stream here, too. So, yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Yay. It's better than it was, for sure. Yeah. It was definitely dark. Thank you. Welcome. Nicely done. Done under pressure. Uh, what shades of gray Copic markers do you use for shading? Cool and, and warm, um, usually three through six. Just watch uh, any minute from now, the clouds are going to clear up and it's going to be so bright that it just lights up the screen. Yeah, I mean, it's really dark. Someone's talking about the un unboxing. They're saying the empty vault worked really well for Geraldo. Yeah, right. <laughs> Can you imagine if they'd found Jimmy Hoppa? That'd be funny. Or not funny, but crazy. <clears throat> Did you go to China for your research for Mulan? Uh, a group did go to China. I wasn't part of that group. Actually, when we were at CTN a couple years ago, uh, Pam Coates, who was a producer on that movie and a good friend of Aaron's, along with uh, uh, Tony Bancroft and uh, who's the co-director? Barry Cook? Yeah, Barry Cook. Uh, they told a really good story about that research trip in China, and Pam brought up the point, you know, how <clears throat> when Mulan was made, there was no internet yet, and it was actually a really big deal to be able to go there and do that sort of research because you couldn't find that information. China wasn't as open to the rest of the world at that point. There wasn't a lot of documentation, yeah. and just how invaluable actually putting boots on the ground was to make that movie Yep. Feel authentically Chinese. Boy, I tried to get on that trip, but I wasn't high enough up the up the totem pole at the time. I was like, "Hey, I can be your sketch artist. I'm going to go and I'll fill up all these sketchbooks. You need somebody on this trip for that." Had you okay. been cast as the lead villain yet? Uh, no, not yet. I know I that not. ultimately changed, and you didn't do the lead villain, but it's yeah. Kind of, I was just curious because I almost would have thought that would have ranked you. No, a lot of times, even that wouldn't have got me on the trip. Uh, Mark Hen got on the trip because he was Mark Hen, and plus he was the, <coughs> the supervisor of Mulan. What's your favorite song? Sailing takes me away to where I've always dreamed it could be. I was expecting it to be bow, 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 bow. What's bow, bow, bow? Africa. Bow, bow. Oh, oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, Mulan, ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Yeah. Ain't nothing gonna slow me down. Yeah, oh, that's right. Ooh. Matthew Wilder did Matthew the music Wilder. Mulan. He was the, he was the uh, songwriter for Mulan. And there's a guy that does not look like what you picture him to look like. <laughs> He's a little guy. Yeah. Uh, what sort of lighting setup do you recommend for a down shooter? I'm trying to set one up for a portfolio in shooting animations. Even lighting basically is the is the key. You, ideally, you want something that's temperature neutral, mm -hmm. and you want something that's you don't want any cast shadows. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Aaron, I stole that answer. <laughs> I did not. No, I, I purposely was letting you guys answer. I was just acting like I knew what I was talking about. 
Because I don't know. You guys are the techs. I'm lost without you guys. Uh, Dustin, did you know Netflix is making a live-action Cowboy Bebop series? They even posted the opening sequence on the YouTube channel. Yes, and I'm, I lost interest in it. I mean, I'm... You're such a I, Cowboy Bebop snob. Yep. I am, and I don't mind that at all. <laughs> I, It's very similar to Disney with their... with remaking masterpiece animations into live action for no reason. They... Cowboy Bebop should have never been touched like those Disney movies. <laughs> and that's my two cents. Are you using Strathmore toned paper? Yes. Nine inches by 12 inches. <clears throat> also want to let people know that Ronnie Williford's course on drawing basics is on sale this weekend for 50% off. That's future crazy. Future. Uh, it's been one year since that course came out, so we thought it'd be a good opportunity. It's a great course for young artists or people that are really trying to get into the basics or need a refresher on the basics. Um, you know, check it on out. I'll post a link in the comments. And another shout out for Vedanta Sproston and her birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Well, all right, let's just say congratulations to Selena Birch for her sister's birthday. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh. Congratulations. It's your sister's birthday. <laughs> uh, what did you learn when animating from Mark Henn, Glenn Keane, uh, Andre Dea? Uh, Deja. Deja. Damn it. I learned everything from them. <laughs> I can't, from, from all, that's from that's all not a grades. question I could just sit down and go, well, I learned this and this and this. I learned everything from them. Everything that I teach on my courses, I first learned from them. From Glenn and, uh, and Mark. I learned a ton from Glenn and Mark. Andreas and I never directly worked with each other. We just knew each other. And I was always a big fan of his work. And so I would, I would learn indirectly by seeing his work in dailies and seeing how he handled certain aspects of shots and, and whatnot. Whatnot. Yeah, everybody had their own style. You know, you could always tell a, a Mark Henn scene. You could always tell an Andreas scene. You could always tell a Glenn Keane scene. And you could, you, you learn something different from all of them. Mark, because we, we worked in the same studio together, uh, Andreas and Glenn worked in the California studio. Mark and I worked in the Florida studio together. Um, and we often worked together where, like in Lion King, he did Simba, young Simba. And I did young Nala. So, we, you know, we had a lot of shots that we would animate together and he'd show me. And Beauty stuff. and the Beast. Yeah, you did Beast, Beast and he I did Belle. Beast and he was Belle. And in uh, and Aladdin, he was Jasmine and I was Raja. And so we just, we just clicked that way and, and, uh, um, where I was always in his office, and he's one of the most prolific animators at this. Uh, Mark was, is he's still there, and um, one of the coolest lessons he taught me. I could, I can, you know, if I kind of go through. If you look at my expressions course, I talk about those really iconic, like a circle and a happy face. You know, if you can retain those those simple icons in your character drawings, then you're 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 there. You're ninety percent there as far as getting your your uh, your animation to read clearly. And that really stuck with me. That was a lesson that I really remembered. Uh, Martin's asking, uh, is the course with Manny still a thing? And if yes, well, when will it come out? Whenever Manny decides to get off his butt and do it. <laughs> oh, Manny's listening right now. Yes, it's definitely still coming. In fact, we were just talking about it last week, as a matter of fact. He's done a little bit of filming. It's just, it's going to be an interesting course. It's going to be different than some of the courses we've done. So it's, it's, 
it's a little more nature based and being out on location and filming. So yeah, which it. which I love because I mean, so much of being out and sketching and and all of that is it's it's a spiritual experience a lot of times. But it makes it a little more complicated of a of a shoot, you know. So it's it going to take a yeah. little while to put it together. Yeah, I'll give you that. Also, he needs to get off his butt and finish it. <laughs> uh, Erica Bay is asking, "What size Artie do you have?" I was I was going to look into getting one. I didn't know if I should go with A three or A four. Yeah, I, I never can never remember the difference. What's the difference between an A3 and an A4? I'm guessing. One five. is seven. One is 11 by 17. The other one's 8 by 10. Is that right? Or 8 by 11? You know, I've got the the, eight, uh, the 11 by 17, whatever that one is. Hey, Dustin. Yes. The, my Artie is hanging up on the shelf behind you. Can you bring it over here? Yes. It's this size, whatever this size is. You know, up, up, up about the main, main camera. So you can see my hands in comparison to the... I put it on the face, uh, on your face camera. Oh. So it's this size, whatever that okay. size is. This to me is the is the uh, most versatile, most versatile size. So for those of you out there that are interested, this is called an Arty. Uh, it's by Lilo Roche. Um, they make these are art bags that are made custom, and you know I keep all my keep all your your pens, your brushes, all in there. Um, I've taken this thing all over the world. Yeah, you your bag in here for all your pads. Uh, I don't think they make them custom anymore. They probably don't. The last couple times you've I've had... never I I I only ordered the one custom one. Yeah, I know. I think I did tell them that. Say that. Yeah, I the think... last couple times you've commented, you said that they've commented that they're too backed up to do customs right now. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, but they're but great. They're awesome. I've, I've, and th this particular one, I've literally taken all over the world. How do you bring human expressions to animals? Any tips on that? Yeah, I mean, it's easy to anthropomorphize an, an, a, an animal's face because they basically, when you're looking at them straight on, have their features placed in the same places as us. And it's really, it really boils down to giving animals eyebrows. I think it's as simple as that. Give them eyebrows and, and that's it. And you just want to make sure you're doing it in a way that matches their markings. And because uh, that's really the biggest difference. How are cheetahs different when approaching them when you're in the Mount Saimora when you stroke one of them in, in the Jeep? And why stroke a lion or leopard near the Jeep? I didn't stroke them. I didn't touch them. I photographed them. Uh, you're talking them. about the video that I showed <laughs> you on the live stream last week, remember? The yeah. cheetah in the, in the, in the oh. car. <laughs> they thought that was real? Yep. No, I, that wasn't real. That was fake. <laughs> you called <Nick>. it. <laughs> that's Nick's fault. Oh, oh, that's great. That's great. It's great. That's great. Oh my god. <laughs> no, that 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 was fake. That wasn't a real cheetah. Inside. I stand by it. It was real. The whole thing <laughs> happened. It's exactly how it happened. I saw it. <laughs> it was real. The Earth is flat. Illuminati is a thing. <laughs> Dustin. Yes? Go to the desktop. Oh, hold on. This froze. Oh. There it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. That looks super real. Freezing on me. Oh, it's freezing on you. Right, go back to him. Ah, uh, scary. What Copic marker were you using? I'm using gray, uh, warm gray, 
three through five. <clears throat> Aaron, you should plan on doing an autumn plain air painting workshop in the Northeast next year. That would be awesome. Okay. That would be cool to paint the, the fall foliage and all that. I know. I guess it's too soon to, too late to, to go and do that this year. But yeah. Yeah, yeah let's plan it. Let's do it. Let's do something in Vermont. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, Tim is a, uh, Tim Hodge is asking any tips on drawing reflections and how much refraction uh, to put in the water surface. Well, Tim, and I know I know Tim knows this already, and I'm sure you're just pulling this out for students. But uh, reflections are a perfect example of understanding geometry and angles, and you know there are. They are exactly the opposite angle of whatever angle you're looking at the object in. Um, and so you have to think of it in that way. Um, I always think of wherever the, the water surface is as the plane, and what would that creature look like sitting opposite on that on that plane uh, in the opposite um, viewpoint and draw that. And then then you have your distortions that you put on top of that. It's hard to explain. I, I, I just through words. It, I I do so much better drawing and explaining it. Also, for those of you who may have joined us late, uh, there's still an opportunity to get Aaron's art books. <clears throat> We've got two art books coming out. Uh, if you go to creatureartteacher.com/books, the books are all printed. They're done. We're just waiting for them to arrive. Uh, they're at port. They just got to clear customs. So right now, if you go to PeachArtTeacher.com slash books and you pre-order, you're guaranteed a signed copy of the books. So, and once the pre-order is over, once we have them, there won't be any more signed copies. So if you want to get them, do it now while there's still time. Yeah, I got I to gotta run over and get a bigger plate. Run over to my drawer. Your drawer. Yeah, I don't know these white markers. Files of them. Well, I can't find a single one right now. There's two. Hopefully, these are still good. Oh. Um. Oh. Oh. Facebook. Uh, looks like we lost Facebook. Can I see? That's my, that's my game. Oh, they disappeared? <laughs> I wonder if it's our, if because of the storm. Uh, it's still, yeah, it's still not. We lost Facebook. I say again, we lost Facebook. I think that's actually a Facebook issue. Is yeah. the, other, the other ones are all still up. Yeah, I wonder if it has to do with the uh, Facebook outage that happened earlier in the week. I wonder if it's still having issues. Buggy. Still. still buggy. Oh, I'm getting a picture. Oh, we're back we're, we're We're back. We're back. Yeah, that was weird. Facebook went down for, for a short bit there. All right, so I pretty much got all the white in here that I'm going to draw, other than the, the grasses once I finish this up. I've got, I'm going to blow through this kind of fast now. Yeah, we got places to be. <laughs> Things to do, places to be, birthdays to celebrate. <clears throat>
I know. It's just giving that new character, new character. Yeah, yeah, heard. <laughs> but it's on the one side. And the whole left side of this. There's no shadow there. Okay, weird though, it's like the ice is off. It's what? It's all dark on this side. It's like I know. It's totally black. And I haven't seen things. the clouds this thick in a long time. I don't think I get a hand shadow. But you get a hand shadow. Be yeah, just no, you, you got to you you light it from over here. Hand shadow, hand shadow. So dark. I don't know what's crazy. I don't know what's crazy. Hey, uh, mind if I slip in there real quick? Ladder. Hey, look, it's a lizard with a ladder. I'm going to try raising the, uh, focus a little more on the, uh, camp Yeah, like the left half of the screen is black. Yeah. Look, it's that dark. Oh, it's, yeah, it's sometimes weird. Like when, yeah, see, when your body casts a shadow. It's like, yeah, but the image is okay. Yeah, yeah it is now. But it was getting as you when your hand comes across it, it, yeah. it blacks out the image. That's crazy. Crazy. Crazy just breaking. Crazy. A little too hot now, Dustin. That's too hot. Yeah, you're blowing out on one side. And just stop, to, just stop messing with it. Yeah, we're exactly the way it was. Yeah, we're just gonna have to live with what it is. Sorry, everybody. It's crazy uh, I think clouds we outside. Need a, we need a light up higher is what we need. Does this go up higher? Bring that up and then lean it over. Yeah. I brought the other one over. No, just bring it up high and then shine it down. That should even it out. As high as you can get it. And then move it in as close as you can. Yeah, just to. Yeah, but it really does cancel out that shadow there. Yeah, I I don't want the the quality of the image to be a sacrifice though. No, it's not. It's just hot. It's a little too. Looks like we're running a little bit hot tonight. Reach down between my legs. Ease the seat back. He's running. I can't remember the words. Van Halen, baby. Well, I think we're right. Yeah, that's good. We'll do it live. <laughs> I wonder if there's any light mounts that, that can be mounted directly on that. Front. Wait, how long have we been doing this? Five years now? Give or take. Not in this studio. No. no I mean, we're always studio. introduced with new, with new troubles. <coughs> I mean, one moment we're having sound issues, we fix the sound issue in the next stream, and then all of a sudden it's so no, we always wait till the stream before we discover the issue. Huh? We always wait till the stream before we fix the issue. Exactly. Well, I mean, we've known for a while that the only way to solve lighting is to not have any natural light and just make it a studio. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And Facebook is down again. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be wrapping this up pretty soon anyway. I mean, as we, as we, as I work my way down, I'm going to slowly kind of do less and less grass and let the imagination fill it in. I wonder if there's a cold, like a cold sheen on or just a mountain in general for the black magic cage to allow us to mount the light directly up the yeah. so we can put that down light. 
that would probably be the best way to fix that issue. But I don't like having a camera at an angle that's going to show me straight out. Are you thinking the angle of the camera is causing the heat? No, no, we were just talking about something else. Let's see, because that, that shouldn't cause anything. They were just talking about the uh, the the directional lighting. We can just mount a light to the, to the camera. There. Oh, that's a great idea. We just need to get a... Think of, I don't know if we have any parts to... We do. Do we? Yeah. yeah. Facebook is still down. Well, it's just... I'm sure it's down for the for the count. Yeah, we're live everywhere, everywhere else. Right? How are we doing on time, fellas? It is 2.44. Okay, so we're coming up on the second hour. I'll finish this up here in a few minutes. So I always love doing these these ink drawings, um, especially like I said, when you get into the environmental part and get into the grasses and you have three values or four values if you want to use your grays as well to really get these across and you can you can get a surprising amount of depth into the grass this is one that i did um while we we're out there i think i may have shared this with you but with much taller grass thicker grass so the markings were a little bit different but you really can build some depth in there and uh, the, the white pen really adds some nice uh, accents. Am I in the right spot? A little, slightly lower. There you go. I'm crazy for crying. Crazy for trying. Crazy for dying. Who wrote that? No idea. It was Patsy Klein that sang it, right? Wasn't it? I think it was Patsy Klein. I think she wrote it too. Nope. Willie Nelson wrote that. Really? Yep. Hmm. I was I was not expecting that. Carl Hackman on YouTube says, Hi, Aaron. I'm 60 next month, and your inspiration has pushed me to try pen and ink this month. Thank you. Carl, we've communicated on Facebook. How you doing? I like the drawings you've been doing. That's awesome. I'm glad that you're finding something that you're enjoying. Can never get enough drawing. If you're interested in pen and ink lessons. Yes. 30% off this weekend for Inktober, my my uh, approach to drawing in pen and ink, where I take you through a couple of different lessons um, and just really bring you through in my approach to drawing fur. And we do a couple of lines. I do a, a big male line and a female line. And we do two different types of ink. I do the brush ink like this with the mail line, then I do a ballpoint pen as well. I love drawing a ballpoint pen. And uh, it's a great medium. Do that. Maybe a little bit over here. The here, here, here. My gym teacher used to say, Aaron, get on over here. 
Right. Yeah, yeah. Do you prefer toned gray or toned tan? I'd like the toned gray. Toned it's a little gray. bit more neutral. And I think it's a, a slight value darker. I could be wrong, but it feels just a touch darker to me. I like it a little darker. Aaron, if I take your creature or teacher.com classes, would I be able to get accepted into an animation studio without a college degree? You can get it. You can get animate. Or can get accepted into an animation studio without a college degree and without my lessons. You don't need. You just need to be able to animate. Now, yeah, my lessons are going to help me animate, but I'm not. It's not going to give you any kind of guarantee or any kind of certificate. But generally speaking, animation is not a field that requires a college degree. No. I never got my college degree. And many, many, many of the guys I worked with didn't have college degrees. By the way, I think Facebook is having an outage outage again. I don't think it's just us. Oh, they're outage. melting down again? Yeah, it's been acting all weird this past week. Oh... Come on, Mark. Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, which is which? Do you think is easier, uh, 2D or 3D animation? You know, I've never been a 3D animator. I've never learned to do 3D animation. <clears throat> um, I don't know the tech, technical aspects of it. Um, I do know that drawing an animation is really hard. But I can't compare the two. Speaking of Facebook, uh, that girl was in front of Congress, and she said the buck stops with Mark. And all I could think is, would it really have been that hard to say the buck stops with Zuck? Come on, you had the chance. <laughs> you were right there. <laughs> did it sound like she had an axe to grind? I did. I just saw highlights. Oh, I don't know. I didn't know if you were watching it. Uh, will you ever try your hand at 3D animation? Probably not. I, I never say never, but it's not <laughs> anything that's on my radar right now. 3D sculpting, though, is on your radar. It, that is. I, I, I totally agree with you. I've been wanting to do ZBrush for a while. Crazy. It's so freaking right. crazy. <laughs> Do animators who attend the big art schools in California and elsewhere have an edge in the industry? No. Well, actually, I take that back. If you're going to that school, you're already in the area. So maybe you do. That's if you want to be uh, you know, at the studio. But it's becoming, nowadays, um, since COVID, you know, studio, especially animation, animation really didn't take that bad of a hit. And it's because of the ability to stay home and work. Someone on Twitch is saying, I'm an animator and I'm a working animator and I did not do, go to college. I did went, go to a private school, but my certificate didn't even get looked at. At the end of the day, your demo reel is what's important. Exactly. In Disney, did you rig your characters, or did you have to draw frame by frame? No, it's all hand-drawn. When I was there, it was hand-drawn animation, so it was frame by frame. Uh, do you have any recommendations for a downshoot? A downshooter? A downshooter, yes. Uh, whatever brand that is, because that's a pretty good brand. Do you remember what brand that was, Nick? Oh, that setup? I think they mean the camera. We just use a Canon DSLR camera for the for the actual setup. As far as the stand itself, you know what this? I don't know what the brand is. It wasn't cheap though. The thing's a lot more expensive than you would think. Right. It's like five hundred bucks for that. Five hundred? Yeah. I can see that. I mean, really? A lot of metal. Huh? Really, it's a piece of metal with a platform. It seems way overpriced to me, but yeah. but it's a very handy uh, platform.
So here I'm, I'm breaking up the values. For the graphs. <clears throat> Oh. Hey Aaron. Hey. Uh, any way to add both pre-order books to the cart on your website? No, you yeah. have to order them separately. And we've been having a lot of problems with people getting confused by that. Yeah, they they replace each other and I would need to uh, pay the shipping fee twice. Yeah, that's because we they're not they're not being shipped together. Yeah, we had no way of knowing when which book was going to arrive at what time and yada yada yada. So yeah, unfortunately, that's the only way we could do it. Because we're shipping them out in the order in which the orders come in, so. And we don't even know that we are going to get both books at the same time, so. Although we expect to at this point. And uh, on the note of uh, the, we were talking about the down shooter gear and all that, could you run through some of your camera gear? Uh, for shooting, I think just in reference. I think just a, yeah, I think like the reference and just filming in general. So, for well, filming we, the courses, we use uh, the Black Magic uh, uh, Pocket Cinema, Pocket Cinema four uh, K cameras. <coughs> um, we used to use uh, Sony the Sony four K filming cameras, um, and for the reference photos. Uh, Dad has been using uh, Vedanta's A9 Mark II from Sony, and I use uh, Sony's uh, uh, A1 camera with various ones. And then for the down shooter for uh, for the 2D animation, has been with the uh, Canon, with your old uh, Canon DSLR. Yep. I'm just going to finish this up now with a few white blades of grass kind of stand out. Now, for the person that was asking about um, doing the white over pigment, I take that I take back part of what I said because there are times where you're going to want to punch little negative spaces like what I'm doing now. And I find that the white works best over alcohol-based pigment. Um, oh, water-based stuff, the pigment actually blends with the, uh, with the white pen. Is there a particular kind of light or lamp that will work for, for a down shooter? Um... Probably LED that you can control the brightness and uh, temperature with. Yeah. Like, what about the uh, the ones that we currently use, Nick? Do you remember the names of those? I don't know. Hey, I can't see. Viltrox. Vil Viltrox? Yeah. Talk on it. <laughs> what do you do with all these uh, ink drawings over the years? Do you stack them all up somewhere? No, I usually just throw them out because we don't really have any need for them. <laughs> once they, once I've already done the demo, they're, they're just trash. No. We often sell them. In fact, we might be selling this one, right? Yeah. Anyone want to buy this one? <laughs> Starting bid of $10. Uh, you... No. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the website next next stream. We might have this up for sale. Oh, Abby says I have one of them hanging up on my wall. Hey, nice. Hey, nice. It's 
freaking hot in here, man. People don't realize this office is like a thousand degrees. I just went, I had an air conditioning company come out and hear that thunder. Come out. Oh, wow, it's really dumping. Oh, sorry. Oh, is it? Um, oh, yeah, it is. I had an air conditioning company come out yesterday and give me a quote to, to get a new air conditioner in here. And I wonder why I was feeling. It's actually, I actually feel like it's cooling down a little bit. Well, because of the rain. Yeah. Which is great news. Which completely tells me that the heat in here is purely outside environmental. Did I tell you, Nick? It's, a, it's at least exacerbated by it. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you when I got back because I had the computers off the whole time I was gone. Yeah. I walked in here and it was still super hot. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, computers throw heat, but they're not throwing <laughs> in a room this big. They're not throwing that much heat. No. Like if it was in the. The old studio, the <coughs> in the land, yeah, the computer would definitely cause that that much heat. But there we go. I think we're done. Done. Yep. Are you sure about that? Yep. Gonna sign it. Don't forget to save your work. And it is dumping out there. Holy smokies. All right, there you go. So I don't know. Can I pick it up and will yeah, it go pick out it of focus? Yeah, pick it up and bring it a little closer. Yeah. Will it go out of focus? Go back to the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's out of focus. Just hold uh, Just... Uh, well, I'll screw it. Uh, we'll, let's do a scan of it. And then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll post it later on. Yeah, that'll work. A little lower, a little to your left. <coughs> Good. So there it is, folks. Our little cheetah. Oh, here's my, here's my referrals. There's a drawing. Referrals, drawing, referrals, drawing. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us today uh, and every Friday. We had a great time today. And uh, once again, remember we've got two things going on. My, um, it's in Inktober. And so if you go on over to creatureartteacher.com and get my uh, approach to drawing in ink, you can get that for 30% off this weekend. And it's also the one-year anniversary of Ronnie, Will Ronnie Williford's introduction to drawing, and you can get 50% off of that course as well. And then also, you know, everything else is always a great deal. So go and check out the whole thing. But uh, thanks for hanging out with us today and doing the traditional work. I always love getting back to the desk and getting off the computer for a little while. Um, but uh, we got go, we got a birthday to go celebrate, so we're gonna take off and go uh, eat some ramen. Happy birthday, Vedanta! We love you. <laughs> Hope you're watching, and uh, we will <laughs> be there soon. Talk to you later. Thanks a lot, you guys. Have a great week. Bye. Yeah. Can we Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a great week. Can we be?